Hello everybody, what's up? Cedric here, it's CR Wrestling Commentary, and I will be reviewing SmackDown uh, August uh, 16th. So look, first and foremost, I want to say thank you to everyone that gave their well wishes. I was actually stunned by one of them. Now, I'm, I'm going to say this, uh, what the, the surgery I had was kidney surgery. I had uh, a, a, a kidney stone. It was over an inch in diameter. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, they had to cut through a few layers of muscle. Um, and I'm a portly guy, so a layer of fat. And they had to cut through the kidney, get a little contraption, get the stone, break it down. Pull all the, pull that out and all the fragments it leaves behind and uh, do a lot more things using a stint that is not cool right now, but I'm sure I need it and it develops a lot of fears and whatnot. Um, I can go into more detail, but that would be upon request. So you know, just letting you know, which I don't mind sharing and you know I kind of want to, but this is predominant. This is for SmackDown. And, whew. oh man, the medications, yeah. <sighs> okay, <clears throat> so for those that made it this far and haven't tuned out, uh, let's get into this, okay? Hopefully I can get this done. Uh, this starts off with uh, Tiffany Stratton, who celebrates with Pretty Deadly uh, for Nia Jax, but Jax is not happy with all the pink balloons. Uh, as she says, it's not her style. Her style is more destruction. Oh, okay, I like that. But the thing that really got to me was, look, I'm still new-ish to SmackDown. But pretty deadly, as, as I've already seen them, now they are being used for this. It's, I mean, very low. It lets you know where you are. It lets you know who you are. So, yeah. Nia says she's a woman of her word. And she did what she said she was going to do. She won Queen of the wing, Ring. And, uh, oh my fud, they are Queen of the Wing. Um, and then destroyed Bailey, Captured the women's title. She says that people need to start bowing to her. And Tiffany needs to be the first. And they go through their little exchange. And she's like, yeah, you. You, yeah. So to keep from bowing, Tiffany gets pretty deadly to do a song and dance, which they cringingly did. Then Mi Chen sneaks up and beats everyone down with a kendo stick. Just on the ring. And see and 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 I had to know I said it earlier, but I said to me this fully ruins pretty deadly as it's crap because well Chen can't visually visually only Defeat Nia Jax. You look at the two. It's it's basically the lesser version of Awesome Kong. You know, and almost anybody, but mainly Gayle Kim. <sighs> Ugh. I, I I don't know how they're gonna work this, but you know what? Uh, Mi Jin she. She got some guns on her. You know, we'll see how they go. Carmelo Hayes versus Andrade. No longer the idol or El Idolo. Um, I'm speaking low if y'all want to know because it's hard to project. It's really hard to get my voice up there. Uh, so I'm doing the best I can. Plus it's late night. It's 1.16 a.m. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Hayes, he... Uh, I, I skipped this match. Oh, it's going to be about a 15 minute match. And seeing that the girls in the back had already dissed Hayes, Hayes has to win to make this feud mean anything. So Hayes, he does a, he does a runner hold, uh, folding his feet down. So Andrade lost, three count win. Cool. And Hayes, I'm going to have to make this messed up comparison, but pretty much like. A lot of people that I've met in life, but 
currently because she enjoys playing around. Like my daughter, he cannot win with grace. Hayes talks trash and won't win gracefully as Andrade, well, provoked, attacks Hayes going into full guard with strikes. They break it up. Andrade leaps over them, gets the nice shot in. Hayes tries to get him, but, you know, that middle rope just it's hard for Hayes to navigate over that middle rope for some reason. You know, maybe if somebody grabbed him and threw him over the top rope, he would have got to him, but I don't know. So, bloodline business. Tamatanga returns the uh, tribal chief lay to Sokoa. Thomas says something, but his volume is really low. Sokoa tells him that if Roman can take that lay from him, that Roman will be the tribal chief, and Tama will acknowledge him. This means he, Solo, Will acknowledge him too and he said he said i will acknowledge him and i had to note this i think it went over a lot of people's heads but i gotta say that's a ton of honor pouring from solo sokoa that's a ton of honor i i think that flew over people's heads uh let's see uh naomi lost again uh wd wwe did a package on alpha who recently passed away, and they did a really great job with them. Um, Alpha, Sika, I mean, it's like, people like that, brothers, cousins, family, best friends, great friends, it, it don't matter. They usually don't, you know, stay around too much longer after the partner goes away. So I was already prepared. Um... But they talked about so much stuff that he did, the charity, the wrestling school, the, you know, and things like that. But, um, is, would it be, would it be breaking some kind of kayfabe to acknowledge the good that, a, that while they're, our ba they're a baby face, the good that they're doing for communities and whatnot? They work for you why not mention something along the way? You know, it could help their business and whatnot. Just because you don't get anything out of it don't mean you don't have to say anything. You know, I gave free ads to a lot of people when, uh, a long time ago, but then nobody was talking about me or anything, so I just slowly stopped. You know, I'm that type of guy that's as loyal to the people as the people are loyal to him. You know, so you showing me love, I'm going to show you love. You don't care about me. I'm not going to care about you. So you can't get mad. You know, I've, people in the past at school, when they get mad, they got mad at me. They're like, you care about him? Not really. You don't give a damn about me. And the person get mad. I'm like, what you getting mad for? Like, yeah, man. They said, you're supposed to love me while, while I can't wait to sneak you somewhere. No, no. Mm-mm, mm-mm. That ain't happening. Um, so I, I'm just, I just with the WWE would acknowledge their former wrestlers or those that are still more or less loyal to them and whatnot, just acknowledge them not when they're dead do it while they're here that's what I that's what I was wishing okay that's enough of that that rant uh, so next uh, Grayson Waller he, he's doing his thing he's talking his trash Kevin Owens come in he's all like you're right you're right so let's go out there and show how much of an easy W I am you know and so, Kevin Owens versus Grayson, Comic Relief, Waller. And there's nothing wrong with being Comic Relief, but if you're going to be Comic Relief, like, like The Rock was Comic Relief, Kurt Angle was Comic Relief, you know, Gregory Helms, I'd rather call him Shane Helms, but Gregory Helms was Comic Relief, you know, um, Do Love was Comic Relief. And there are points where The Undertaker was Comic Relief. It's all about how you do it. Vince McMahon, Steve Austin, maximum comic relief. This dude is boring. So, I had to note, it's been a while, but what I had seen of Theory a long while ago on Raw, he was being built as a top mid-card guy, close to being a potential top guy. He was trying to impress Vince McMahon. I remember that. And what happened to him to be 
bust it down to this. That's what I was wondering. Anyway, for the match, I can see Waller's about grade level comedy. It's, you know, someone that ranges from about 8 to, I'd say, 15, 16 years old. Um, Owens attacks theory unprovoked. What doesn't seem smart, seeing that he'll owe, he'll owe Owens. I mean, you know, it's like get a receipt, bro. Owens wins with a stunner, followed by a pop up power bomb. I thought that was just way too much. Um, you know, following a finisher with a finisher, and it's just some low card guy. Anyway, Owens beats down Waller after the match. Um, Theory stops Owens and. Cody runs in and stops the double team advantage with chairs. And then I'm just waiting for Owens to turn on heel on Cody between today, well, which Friday passed, and Bash at Berlin. I'm, I'm just waiting for the turn. Owens picks up the undisputed title, hands it to Cody. I, don't, I wish the people was, would just chill. I mean, Owens picked up the belt, but I didn't even give it any mind, and everyone's like, ooh. I'm like, what in the hell? Anyway, so bloodline business. So we got backstage. Tama, Tama adorns the so uh, adorns solo with the tribal chief Lay, um, which I get the name right later because they they mentioned it and I was like yay, but uh, solo uh, says that tonight Roman needs to acknowledge him and I'm like all right, that ain't gonna happen. So Escobar has a meal sit down with a group of with with his group and declares that he'll take the US belt from LA Knight who just won it. He claims that his faction needs to um reinstall fear in the SmackDown or the people around or whatnot and remind them of who they are. And I had to know for me, you are as you have been presented. Besides, logically, WWE won't do what they could do. Because they screwed the pooch on it. Escobar's group is pointless. They should have stayed warm. They should have built them up somehow. But they're currently in northern waters waiting for rubbishly built ships to run into them. That's how cooled off they are. You can't salvage this Legato faction. You, it's, you just can't. At best, they are opening to opening matches to opening mid card. That that's the best that they, they're gonna get. They're just, and this is the leader going to get his ass whooped. It's gonna be a competitive match. They're gonna cheat and they're gonna lose. That's what's gonna happen. And that's what needs to happen. You can't go from zero to hero. You got to rebuild. You got to make some examples of some of the smaller people. Show that you mean business. Have a slightly different repertoire of moves. Show a better demeanor. You know, calm or whatever you want to do. Rugged, angry, something. And build on that. <sighs> anyway, Ellie Knight comes out, cuts a promo, points out Escobar's just trying to be like him and he's going to beat his ass. I'm like, all right. Then Mi Chen leaves uh, Aldous' office and is praised by Chelsea Green and Piper Niven who are, who are um, not happy with her title shot against Jax. And then they go into his office. So then from behind, Jax shoves Chen into the office door and says, not so tough without your kendo stick, huh? I like that. I thought that was good right there. Aldous exits, admonishes Jax, making her into the office while and he was just like, whatever and I was like oh you just made yourself look weak uh, when she when Jack was like you know whatever I was like oh crap now you sound like the, the the teenage girl going to the principal's office you just sounded so weak um I'm recovering from surgery and I sound stronger than you um so yeah the staff was checking on Michi and or Mimi as Green Green would say yeah this is a disappointing part for me and it's not for what you think Street Profits versus DIY winners of this match will battle the bloodline for the tag titles 
And I wrote, that would be DIY. And then I had to, I was wrong. Street Profits won with the Doomsday Blockbuster and Pinfall. And I had to note, capital letters, I wrote, interesting. Um, and I also have to note, I saw none of this match. The site was buffering every three to seven seconds. I just couldn't take it. I really did want to watch that match, too. I really did. I was like, okay, they're top two tag teams. The only tag teams worth a damn. And the others might be, but you won't know it. So I wanted to really see this. I, was, I knew it was going to be like a 12 to 17 minute match, but it is what it is. So then we get Bloodline Business to cap off the night. And uh, so Solo Sokoa with Tomatonga go to the ring. And I can, I'm, I'm actually on their side. I, I, I'm on their side, just massively. Um, and it's for the reasons I laid out before about Solo, his age, his time in wrestling in general, what he's got to go through, what he's going through, and watching him grow. Yeah. Whew, yawning late tired um so let me see let me catch where i am yeah solo says and this is when i get it right uh if you want this ulafala laid back then come take it from me <laughs> it'll bring your ass to the ring and take it from me. I'm like okay and then roman comes out to a godlike intro with the fans adding to it by pointing to the sky and bowing their heads, I was like, good grief. That is better than any pyro, any vocal hype up, that music, him coming out, standing strong, the fans acknowledging him like a pro, like a god. Like I'm like, that you that's just that hasn't been done in wrestling. That's just this this is just new. It's new. Fans usually have a, a sign, a shirt, or they'll clap or cheer, jump up and down, some crying. I don't know why the hell they be crying, but, you know, okay. But this is different. Okay. So... Solo, Roman gets to the ring. Solo hands the um, Ulafala lay to Tama Tonga and orders him out of the ring for he and Reigns to fight. And they, they open up, throwing hands. Solo gets tossed and Tama enters, beating Roman down. Tama checks on Solo, who orders him to keep the pressure up, but Reign recovers, hitting him with the Sambo Slam. Solo takes control as... Roman sets things up outside, so Roman got caught, you know, being a furniture-helping kind of guy. Solo missed the spike, and they had a nice, beautiful shot of it. A beautiful shot as he set up for that. I thought that was awesome. They need to do that from now on. Um, and then he get, but he he missed, and then he got hit by the Superman punch, and he got speared. And I wrote, Loa isn't there. Fatu isn't there. Reigns takes the Ulafala lay, adorns it, reclaims it. And I wrote reclaiming it and his unlost throne. And you could just see the look on his face. He looks so satisfied, like finally, finally is back. But then Jacob, Jacob blasts Reigns from behind. He is there. I'm like, here we go. I can't even really, I'm, I'm sitting here just looking at the screen, but I can't even really react to it because it's, probably gonna hurt real bad if I do <laughs> oh. laughing is shallow breathing is shallow but that's what I gotta do uh, Jacob lash range from behind and throws him into the post Jacob beats down Roman while wearing the medical boot <laughs> sorry for yawning everybody but um, yeah that's a legit medical boot I was looking at it I was like that's really on him that's really on him uh, Roman is alone and he takes the triple power bomb through the table. Jacob won't done. Jacob dragged him dragged him over, threw him into the ring. Tomatonga places 
the Ulafala lay onto Solo Sikoa as they stand over Roman, unified with the original tribal chief or the only chief laying there at their feet. I thought that was good. I thought that was good. And there's a lot of people that might be up there mad saying, look, you know, it ain't like they like, like Solo did it himself. So he looks weak. Okay. Don't forget. And I wasn't watching at this time. But you forget Roman was just like he was the Ric Flair. And they and the horseman was helping him out. The bloodline was helping him out. Helping retain that NWA world title, that WWE world title. It's no different. It's the same thing. It's what a top heel faction does. And they did it right, I think. I didn't see it, but the fact that it's been going on this long. And when the horseman and that business was getting done, Flair turned babyface. Just like Roman turned babyface. It's, it's almost a mirror image. So I, th I think this is going well. I think they're doing good. It's capturing my interest. Uh, I think it's capturing everyone else's too. So, you know, I like this. And I hope they keep it up. I hope that they're planning two and three and four and five years down the line. I'm glad that they take uh they they they're kind of taking Owens out. It seems I don't know, but I think he's going to be a part of it. Um. There's a chance that I don't think I don't. There's a chance that Owens don't turn on Cody because that'll be Randy Orton. But then again, Owens and Orton are so close, and Sami Zayn is on Raw. So if Owen's gonna have a, a a a buddy and keep that tag team going, he's gonna have to turn. So we'll just have to see how that goes. Uh, let me know what y'all think about it and whatnot. But I'm enjoying this, and we'll just see what happens on Friday because they, there's a lot that's happening tag title match, and hopefully it's not gonna do a bunch of buffering and whatnot. So until then. This has been Cedric for CR Wrestling Commentary, Friday Night Smackdown-ish. And with that, I want y'all to be cool, be chill, be safe. And I'll see you next time.